Hey, everybody, this is Jim Hatchell, uh, and I'm excited to be with you today. We're going to be sharing again from the John Maxwell book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth, and the Jumpstart Your Growth journaling uh, companion book that goes along with it. I don't know. This is, this is a great little book. I hope you're, I hope you have gotten a copy of this. Uh, Dale is, is using this one. She's journaling and, uh, I have my own journal. I think I talked to you a little bit about that last week. Journaling is so important, especially as it relates to the law we talked about the other day, the law of reflection. If you can write down things and that happen uh, in your day and you can look back on them, then you can have a better idea of how those can impact you in the future. So without uh, further ado, waiting just a minute or two, we're going to go ahead and uh, we've got a, a room that's starting to fill up. And so Dale, if you want to go ahead and uh, take me out and uh, remove my beautiful face. Oh, that's not beautiful, is it? And there we go. So today we're going to continue the study as we look at Jumpstart Your Growth in the John Maxwell book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. So who am I? I'm a certified John Maxwell coach, trainer, and speaker. And when I say coach, I'm talking about a success coach. That's what I do. I try to help people move from where they are to where they dream about being. It's about success. I'm a member of Toastmasters. I'm a member of Business Network International. I'm a Stephen minister. I've retired from the United States Air Force and the South Carolina Air National Guard, served as a recruiter and career counselor for over 34 years, and was a human resources director for a state agency here in South Carolina. And of course, I'm a part Part, I'm a member of, a uh, partner of the Shackley Key Coordinator team of Dale and Elizabeth uh, Hatchell Burt team. But most important, I'm a husband, a father, and a grandfather. And I just want to share that with you because I think it's so important to my life. And here's a picture of our family uh, just a couple of weeks ago as we were down in Orlando. We took the grandbabies over to uh, Disney for a day. It was about 147 degrees, and we were uh, sweltering that day, but it was a great day to be with the kids and to be with the family. Not pictured here is my son, who uh, is here in South Carolina with us also, and uh, we love our family, and it's so important to us. We're all Shackley family members, and we all use the products uh, to the utmost and we we love our business and we love what we can do and how we can share with other people so the goals that we talked about at the very beginning and what i hope to do with this teaching and with these teachings is to help you realize your potential knowing that we all have more potential than we use and that we can believe in ourselves that you will believe that you can go from where you are today to where you dream about in the future. It's kind of like what Shackley said, you know, why not me? Why not now? Why not you? Why not now? So you have to believe in yourself. We want to increase your level of success in your personal life as well as in your Shackley business. And most importantly, to do all this, I want to help us become intentional in our lives and in our businesses. So let's go ahead and take a jump out here. And we're going to first talk about today, as I said, we're talking about two laws. The first law we're going to talk about is the law of consistency. And, you know, here's the great thing about being consistent. You know, I can be consistent about one thing pretty much anytime I want to, but being consistent on a regular basis is the question that we have to resolve and move forward with. So the law of consistency says motivation, motivation gets you going, discipline keeps you going. And so we're going to talk about how we can grow in consistency. 
And growth is not a single event. And I know you've heard this many, many times. I love Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn was one of my very first mentors, and he talks about discipline and doing the things we need to do, the small disciplines, the small rituals that we need to do daily, every day to get us to where we want to go. So we're going to start talking about how we can take ourselves from inconsistency to being consistent in everything that we need to do. But before we do that, we have to ask ourselves, do we know what we need to improve? Do you know the areas that you need to improve in? So the first thing we have to do is identify those areas that need improvement. We have to be brutally honest with ourselves when we're thinking about that. Don't tell yourself, well, I'm good at this when you really aren't. But if you are good at something, don't deny yourself that recognition. The next thing we have to do is do you know how you need to improve? Do you know what you are supposed to improve? Well, that's the $64 million question. Where and what do I need to improve? And how do I improve that? Well, there's a couple of questions that we can ask ourselves that relate to improving that. So I ask you about this. How does your motivation and your personality connect? You know, we all have different personalities. Now, in John's book, he talks about a personality uh, typing that I am not real familiar with, nor am I really interested in. But there's one that I really like and I think fits the Shackley business extremely well. And it's the DISC, the D-I-S-C. If you've not taken that personality inventory, I would strongly recommend that you do that because each of us is motivated by how we are with our personalities. And the DISC personality typing is a great way to learn how and what your personality is and what motivates that personal type of energy. The next thing we ask ourselves, do we start with the big things or do we start with the small things? I recommend that we start with the small stuff. And here's why. Because if you challenge yourself and you take on something extremely big and you don't accomplish it, then you can get disappointed very easily. That's why we start off talking about Shackley in small increments. We don't want to throw up on people because we discourage them as they'll say, well, I can't do that. Start with the small stuff and build up. It's the same way in our personal growth process. You can't read 25 personal growth books and expect to grow overnight. No, you got to take each one of those books Set up a time to read and grow and learn from each one of them and be patient. It all happens, but it's not going to happen overnight. We hear about people who are overnight successes, but there are also those people who are overnight failures. Be patient with yourself and value the process. That's what's so important about personal growth, and that's what's especially important about our Shackley businesses. We all want to be master coordinators. And while there's some that have jumped out there and done it in amazingly short periods of time, for most of us, it's about following the process, being patient, and taking that one small step at a time so that we can move forward it's about doing the things, you know, we don't become successful in a day. We become successful by doing things, the successful things daily. Be patient and value the process. Smart, start small, find out what motivates you and your personality. 
This is a great quote. The successful person has the habit of doing the things that failures don't like to do. Even though the successful person doesn't like doing them, but his dislike is subordinate to the strengths of his purpose. So when we know what it is that we want, then we know what habits and what things we need to be consistent about. And we don't care if it means we are getting out of our comfort zone. We know we're going to be consistent. We discipline ourselves to keep going forward. Do you know why you want to improve? Do you know why you want to improve? Let's start by asking ourselves a few questions, and we're going to take the why test. Do you constantly procrastinate on unimportant tasks, on important tasks? Do you require coaxing to do small chores? Do you perform duties just to get by? Oh, my word. When I worked for the state, that was one of the biggest things that frustrated me is people would do the minimum they could do to get by each day. Are you doing the minimum in your Shackley business to get by? Do you constantly talk negatively about your work? Do efforts of friends to encourage you irritate you instead? Let me read that one again. Do do efforts of friends to encourage you irritate you instead? Do you start projects and abandon them? Do you avoid self-improvement opportunities? Has quitting become a habit? Do you know when you're supposed to improve? Look at your watch, your clock, your iPhone, your Android, is there anywhere on there that says someday? I don't think so. So do you know when you're supposed to improve? Again, I go back to the daily, daily task. So maybe it's time for us to take a look at a little different aspect as it relates to goals and how we set goals. And maybe it's time to stop setting goals. No, don't jump off the cliff here. I do believe we need to set goals, but I want to share just something with you that I think will help you understand the difference between goal consciousness and growth consciousness. You can't have one without the other. And if you have both, then success is just out of reach and just short from where you're standing today. So goal consciousness and growth consciousness. Goal consciousness focuses on a destination while growth consciousness focuses on the journey. I know we've often heard it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And while you have to have goals before you can have a journey, let's focus on what we're learning and what we're discovering on that journey. Because when you finally get to that destination, the learning will be exponential. Motivates you, goal consciousness motivates you and others. Growth consciousness matures you and others.
Goal consciousness is seasonal. We set new goals every year. But if you are growth conscious and you have a growth consciousness, it's a lifelong learning process. In my introduction, every time I do a Toastmaster speech, one of the things that I say is that I am a lifelong learner. That's about growth consciousness. Now, I have goals of how many books and how many articles, how many tapes and how many. I have goals about how often I want to spend time in that process, in that lifelong learning process. But the growth, growth consciousness is key to that. Goal consciousness challenges you. Growth consciousness changes you. And we'll talk about change in just a minute. Goal consciousness stops when the goal is reached. Growth consciousness keeps growing beyond the goal. Just like I said when I was talking about lifelong learning, you keep growing every day. And if you have a growth consciousness, you're going to keep growing beyond the goals that you set. Goal consciousness waits for growth to come. Growth consciousness, and this is a big one, takes responsibility to grow. If it's going to be, it's up to me. I take full responsibility. And for those of you who are on the call for the first time, you may have heard us talk about, you didn't hear us talk about earlier about a plaque that Dale and I have that, w that says, I am responsible. And we have that sitting on our mantle of all places to remind us that we are responsible. Take responsibility to grow. Goal consciousness learns only from mistakes. Growth consciousness learns before mistakes occur. And we learned and know what to do from our mistakes. Goal consciousness, consciousness depends on good luck and growth consciousness relies on hard work and doing the things that we need to do in a consistent daily basis. If you develop the habits of success, the daily success habits, you will make success a habit. I'm reminded uh, of a part of John's book here where he talks about how consistency is productive and it helps us become productive. He points out about the great musical composers, people like Mozart and Beethoven and Wagner and Bach. He said, you know, they did not wait for the music to come to them. They sat down daily and wrote every day, every day, a little bit more of their music. Great writers do the same thing. They don't write a book in a day. They write a little bit each day. So we can't wait for that inspiration. We have to be prepared to go out and do things on a day-to-day -day basis to make that happen. So waiting is often merely the excuse we use for not producing. But being consistent 
is the answer to productivity. And as I see, said on the slide, if you develop the habits of success, you'll make success a habit. Being constantly productive does not mean grinding away at work. It simply means that the consistent person is the productive person. Your potential is not an event, goal, or product. Your potential is a constant journey of discovery, growth, and insight. So what are those things you need to do on a daily basis to help you go from where you are today to where you dream about in the future? What habits, what rituals are you not doing that you need to be doing on a day-to-day -day basis to take your personal growth journey to the next level, to take your Shackley business to the next level? I challenge you to sit down and think about that. And look at what your daily activities include and decide which ones are the ones that are going to create productivity and which ones are the not creating the results that you want. And then become consistent in following through with those actions on a day-to-day -day basis. So now we're going to talk about the law of, in the, of environment. And the law of environment, which says that growth survives in a conductive surrounding. A quote that I want to share with you here is that the first step towards success is taken when you refuse to be a captive of the environment you find yourself in. And if you don't mind, if I, if you'll allow me just to share a quick story about a time when I found myself in an environment that really was causing me a lot of pain. And I actually, didn't enjoy the job because of the environment that I was surrounded with. And I eventually left that job. But in 2013, after going through a number of changes due to the economy and due to leadership changes, and I found myself in a job with the state of South Carolina as a human resources director, where my philosophy of growth and improvement was no longer accepted by the leadership. And all they wanted to do was use discipline and ways of treating people in a less than positive way, which was against my whole being. And so I was in an environment where I was captive. And I finally, I finally had to step out and make a decision to get away from that. I was coming home stressed out. I was coming home, taking it out on my family. It was just one of those environments that really was not fun to be in. And I've worked all my life. I spent 34 years in the Air Force and never experienced anything like the environment I was in. And so in 2013, I chose to get out of that environment. I stepped away actually in January of 2014. Thankfully, my wife and daughter were working very hard and had a Shackley business that was growing. And with my retirement and my investments and with the potential of being my own boss in my area 
in my sweet spot, I was able to get out of that negative environment. I was able to change and do something where I'm inspiring people and helping people grow from where they are to where they dream about being. Is it time for a change? If you always find yourself at the head of the class, you're in the wrong class. And that's where I was. I knew that I was in the wrong place. Not saying that I was smarter than everybody else. Not saying that I was better than anybody else. But I knew that I had a different vision about how we needed to deal with our workforce. So I knew I needed a change. And change depends on your choices, not somebody else's. It's about us. We have the choice. It's just like attitude, you know. You can have a positive attitude or have a negative attitude. It's your choice. Change is the same way. One of the most difficult things for people to accept is change. But if you're going to be successful in this life, in Shackley, in any part of your life, you're going to have to be able to accept the fact that we're going to have to change to grow. There's a great quote that says, success is the sum of the small effects repeated day after day after day. So what changes do you need to make so that you can do those things day after day after day? If we want to grow and reach our potential, we must be in the right environment. And we must be willing to make the changes necessary to move forward. There is a direct connection between growth and change. So think about this. Think about how you evaluate these things so that you can see how you're thinking about connections and growth and the choices that we make when it comes to change. Think about music, for example. What music lifts you up? And how does that lift you up? Think about your thoughts. What ideas move you? Your experiences. What experiences give me energy? Are you doing those things? Do you need to make changes to help you grow? Friends, are you dealing and spending your time with friends who encourage you? Recreation, what activities give you energy? What's in your soul? What spiritual exercises strengthen you? What are your hopes? What dreams inspire you? What family members care for me at my home? I've got a great cheerleader and wonderful promoter in my household. And I think we do and share that with each other, that we are 
the wind beneath each other's wings and we lift each other. We are occasionally leaners, but by most part, we are lifters and we lift each other. Where is your giftedness? What blessings activate you? What memories make you smile? And what books have you read that have changed you? Change depends on your choices. You can change you and your environment. If you change yourself but not your environment, growth will be slow and difficult. Listen to that again. Change yourself but not your environment. You change, but you stay in the same place. I changed the way I was thinking, but the environment did not get any better. So there was no growth. It wasn't only difficult. There was actually no growth. So change yourself, but not your environment. Growth will be slow and difficult. Change your environment, but not yourself. And growth will be slow and less difficult. So, yeah, you can change jobs or you can change whatever, but if you don't change, growth will be slow, but less difficult. Change your environment. That's what I did. I changed my environment and I changed myself. I did some real deep thinking about who I was and what I was doing and how I was doing it. When I changed my environment and I made a decision that I would never go back to any of those types of thinking again, growth began to happen much faster with much more success. Understand that most people are not interested that most people around you do not want you to change. That most people are not interested in actually growing. As you consider your environment, ask these critical questions. Who nourishes me? What keeps me alive? I don't mean what keeps you breathing. What keeps you alive? I mean energized, energetic, excited, motivated. What sustains me? This is a great quote, and I love it. Jim Rome said this, we are the average of the five people we hang around most. Kind of reminds me of the saying that my grandmother used to tell me all the time. If you go to sleep with the dogs, you're going to wake up with fleas. Think about the people that you surround yourself with. Are they lifting? Are they leaners? Are they giving you energy or are they sucking the energy out of you? If that's the case, change the people you spend time with. Change your environment. Find at least one person who will love you unconditionally. Desire your success and be mature. I mean, I want somebody who's going to be mature and tell me what the truth is. Don't be that immature person and just tell me, oh, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. When it was not that good. Be mature with your answers. 
desire, someone who desires your success and someone who will love you unconditionally and ask you agreed upon questions, questions that you expect them to answer honestly and people who help you when you need help. Challenge yourself in your new environment. When you change and you accept this new environment, challenge yourself. Challenge yourself by doing these things. Make your growth or your goals public. Tell others what you expect to accomplish. Tell, tell them, I need a cheerleader. Here's my goal. Here's where I want to go. This is where I want to grow. Find those people who are going to help you and tell them what your plans are. And go back to those questions that I just shared, those points about the people you want to surround yourself with. Set milestones for your growth. You got to have some point out there where, okay, I'm going to get there by this date. I'm going to read this number of books by this date. I'm going to have this many health prints completed by this date. I'm going to give this many presentations by this date. I'm going to do the sales plan this many times by this date. Set some milestones. Focus on the moment. I love this quote from Emerson. What lies behind us and what lies ahead of us are tiny mitres compared to what lies within us. Celebrate what's in us. Celebrate your moments. Celebrate that time that you have. Move forward despite any criticism. When people criticize you, ignore it. What others say about you is none of your business. You need to focus on the good, the positive, the things that you're doing well. Other people don't have a clue. And if they do, it's probably because they're jealous. Don't let that criticism become a wall, a barrier. They don't know. They're not you. And here's a note for leaders. As we create a culture, Let's ensure that the culture, you've got a business, you've got people on your team, create a culture that will allow others to be ahead of some. Not everybody is going to be at the head of the class. There are going to be some that are further ahead of, than others, but help everybody wherever they are, help them get to the next level. Help each person be individually challenged. Help them set their goals. Help them set their growth plan. Help them know where they need to go. But make sure it's a challenge for them, something that is not easy for them to accomplish, something that was going to make them take the extra effort to do the disciplines to get to the next level. The focus is always looking forward. Going back to the Emerson quote, it's not what's behind us. It's not what that's ahead of us. It's what's in us and what we think about moving forward and how we have to do the things we do on a daily basis to move forward. 
It doesn't matter. You can only do what's to, what you can do today. You can't do tomorrow until to, because tomorrow never comes. Do it today, but have a focus forward. Be affirming. Create a place designed to keep people out of their comfort zone. I have to say it, folks. Living in a comfort zone is comfortable. But living in the comfort zone never takes you to the abundance zone. You can be happy and enjoy where you are in the comfort zone, but you're going to always look out and see people and things and accomplishment by others that you wish it was you, but you said, no, I'm comfortable here. But when you get out of that comfort zone, when you go for the abundant zone, the joys are exponential. The rewards are exponential. Walking across the Shackley stage is a huge, huge recognition. But if you're in your comfort zone, it's going to be hard for you to receive that type of recognition. Get out of your comfort zone. Create an environment where people are encouraged to get out of their comfort zone. Help everyone stay excited. Maybe not quite as excited as I am, but at least ex excited, you know. Um, energy, excitement. It helps put a smile on people's face. And when people are smiling, they attract other people who are smiling. And that's the kind of people you want in your business and to surround yourself with. Remember. That failure is not your enemy, nor their enemy. I had a boss one time who always identified the things that my team and I did wrong. He never saw the things that we did correctly. But that's okay. Because when he told us what we did wrong, we knew what we needed to do to grow. Failure is not your enemy. Don't let that stop you. Even though he didn't know how to recognize the good things, he did share the things we needed to improve on and help us move forward. Keep others growing before you can keep others growing you have to be growing yourself you cannot give what you do not have and you cannot teach what you do not know learning without application is lost Teach it, learn it, grow it. But it starts with you. It starts with me. It's about our growing and teaching and sharing and creating an environment for others to grow. Create a culture where change is desired. where you are not satisfied with the status quo, where you want to change the things that you are doing to move forward and to grow to the next level. Whether it's in your personal life, your spiritual life, your family life, or in your Shackley business. If we want to see something different in our lives, then we have to do something different to get there. 
If you keep on doing the same things over and over and over again, you're going to get the same results over and over and over again. Change. Desire the change. Desire to grow. Growth is modeled and expected. I'm a lifelong learner. I expect to grow. I expect others around me to grow with me because I'm going to share the information with them to help them grow from where they are today, where they dream about being in the future. You'll hear me say that statement over and over again, because that's what it's all about. Friends. It's about going from where you are today to where you dream about, to where you desire to be, to what you want to accomplish in the future. As Napoleon Hill said in his think and grow rich book, you have to have a desire that is like a white hot piece of steel. And without that desire, it's hard to move from where you are to where you want to be because you don't know where you want to be. Have that dream, have that vision, have that place that you want to grow to. Benjamin Franklin put it this way, without continual growth and progress, such words as improvement, achievement, and success have no meaning. How are you going to grow? How are you going to improve? What are you going to achieve? And how successful are you going to be? It all depends on your continued growth, your change in your environment, and doing those things on a daily basis that make us successful. Well, I hope you uh, learned something today and got some some good information from the sharing today. Um, if anybody has any comments or questions, you can go out to the raise your hand and um, they'll be happy to promote you to a panelist and allow you to speak. Um, please know that you will be on camera. Uh, and uh, All right, so.